you know, I started speaking on the floor, <clears throat> and uh, I was elected to the board of directors. And it was a, a fascinating period of time because uh, all the heroes of my uh, youth, you know, when I was a high school student, uh, I was now within their realm. You know, I would go to these meetings and there would be a Willie Hensley, there would be a John Schaefer, there would be an uh, Evan Hobson, there would be a Byron Malott, there would be a John Borbridge, there would be, there would be a John Sackett, there would be a Maury Thompson. These are all the big names. I, they, and I was uh, younger than they were, and I think I was the first one to come up through the system, uh, first a young Alaska Native to come into the corporate system among the, the uh, 12 regional corporations. Uh, and uh, within a uh, short period of time, I became president of uh, Chugach Natives, Inc., and uh, I remember uh, it was only because the board of directors who were so divided and fighting each other so much, and it was, a lot of it was personal stuff, and I was the only one who didn't know anybody on the board of directors. I was the only one who really didn't say anything at the board of directors meetings, and though later I did. And, and the, after everybody was knocked down, I was the only one uh, standing. And so I said, okay, let's make Edgar president. So overnight I became the president of a multi-million dollar corporation. I didn't, I didn't vote to remove anybody. I didn't, uh, I didn't have any political points of view. I didn't know any of the, the players on, on the board of directors, but I was the president of this native corporation. It was only because I was the only one left standing. But the job I had was, was a wonderful opportunity. I mean, I, I think back in the three years that I, I served as president and uh, later chairman uh, during that period, uh, I, I, I remember walking into the office uh, first day on the job as the president of this native corporation and the lawyers running over to me and saying, Edgar, we have a problem uh, in Washington, D.C. The senator from Montana, Senator Melcher, has uh, introduced this amendment um, and uh, nobody objected to it, uh, so it, it passed the committee and it now will require Chugach to go through this uh, prolonged study of lands because what Chugach was trying to do was to move off the mountaintops and the glaciers to tidewater because the Chugach region was national forest lands and other protected lands of the U.S. government. So there was very little to, to get to settle for and all the environmental organizations were pushing us to the mountaintops and the glaciers. And so uh, this amendment by uh, introducing Senator Melcher's committee basically stalled and was pushed for by the environmentalists uh, meant that we that our chances of getting any lands uh, economic development lands near the villages and near tidewater were remote and uh, and so the attorney says well the only uh, person who can stop it is the senator from Alaska Senator Stevens I said well why don't you call Senator Stevens and the lawyer says uh, uh, hit the lawyer the law firm looks at me and says uh, uh, Senator Stevens won't, he's, uh, he's on the floor of the United States Senate, and he won't take a call. The only call he'll take is from the president of the Native Corporation. Well, call him. Tell him I wish to speak to him right now. Call him. And that's the way it happened. And Senator Stevens was on the floor, as, as I was told. And, you know, I was, what the heck, who the heck am I? I'm commanding a U.S. Senator to come to the phone. Who came to the phone? Who took my call? Senator Stevens. And I didn't have a, a comprehensive understanding of the legislation. I just walked into the office. I was briefed uh, as I was trying to settle into my new desk, uh, a job that I didn't campaign for, a job that I didn't really want. But I was now in charge of this native corporation. So, uh, and then uh, I, I flew back to Washington, D.C. And for the next three years, I spent a considerable amount of time in Washington, D.C. Uh, working on the Chugach land study. But, but see, that's a, that's a very important uh, point is those early years. Now times seem to be good for the regional corporations because you have minority contracting, 8A contracting, and you have sophisticated management of these native corporations. In the 1970s, it wasn't that way because uh, the uh, knowledge level of the average shareholder wasn't high because the press, I believe, the press and many non-natives were... were uh, pushing the Alaska Natives to say, demand dividends, demand dividends, demand dividends, because you're a corporation, you're a shareholder, get a dividend. 
Uh, and it was only through you know the good efforts of Senator Stevens that these opportunities and government contracted were opened up uh, for Alaska Native corporations. But uh, that was my involvement. In, but I come from the old school, and uh, which kind of leaves me out on the ice and global warming. My iceberg is melting, and I'm going further and further away uh, from uh, the mainstream thinking. But I still go back to what we started. One was to, uh, to generate jobs for Alaska Natives in rural Alaska uh, and to raise the standard of living for uh, the Alaska Native, you know, uh, the person who is an Alaska Native because that Alaska Native has no choice but to be an Alaska Native. Uh, I still hold on to those old ideas. Now, uh, the corporations, the regional corporations, talk about dividends and they talk about shareholders because that's what the law requires, because that's what the lawyers understand. Lawyers don't understand natives, but the lawyers understand corporate systems. And uh, they can, you know, I use the word manipulate. They can manipulate the boards a bit better if uh, we, they force the natives into thinking uh, their way of thinking. Uh, so my involvement uh, in the 1970s uh, was, uh, you know, uh, pushing for a fair, just, and like equitable, equitable land uh, settlement, which was a land trade with the U.S. government, which finally did come about in 1982. Uh, and uh, but I, I still hang on to those ideas that that there ought that the native corporations ought to be attacking, uh, 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 intact, attacking and tracking the issue of uh, creating uh, employment opportunities and, and raising the standard of living for natives, not necessarily shareholders. I think that commitment is there, but the law uh, says that these are corporations, therefore your only obligation is to shareholders, not to natives. And I think that, but we have to get back to that because the native population is growing. And if I had to uh, give my report card on, uh, after you know watching it for the past uh, almost 40 years, uh, uh, watching it, I would say that um, the condition of the Alaska native has not improved that much. Uh, if I look at uh, the subjects, the, the subject of uh, suicides, the subject of employ employment opportunities, uh, uh, you know, alcoholism, uh, uh, diseases, the health standards of the Alaska Native, I would say uh, that the Alaska Native condition uh, is uh, as worse as it was in uh, the, 1970, the 1960s or worse. And uh, the gap between the uh, have not native and the have native is growing. And so what you're leaving uh, is, and I, I use in times, uh, I say that <clears throat> the corporations have abandoned the Alaska native. Uh, it's, it's a strong statement to stay, and I've often said that I would never say it publicly. Uh, because unless I'm ready to leave the state, and perhaps I am ready to leave the state. But uh, I think there's been an abandonment of the native uh, by the uh, corporations because their emphasis is on shareholders. And that's where the law tells them they have to emphasize to, uh, the basis is, of the corporation is the shareholder. So um, when I look at it, I think uh, perhaps the future may not be as bright. But I don't think anybody's really looking far off into the future. I don't look far off into the future. You know, I just worry about who, who's going to uh, buy me lunch tomorrow or this evening you know, or dinner tonight. You know, that's about all I worry about. But there are tremendous issues out there, and Alaska Natives, I think, have to wrap their arms around these issues. And uh, we have to do it. We have to do it like soon. We have to do it before the wealth becomes more personal. Once the wealth becomes personal, you will create huge conflicts within families. You know, why did this, why did my brother uh, inherit uh, 50 shares of the stock and he gets a 10,000 7i or 7j distribution and I get nothing? Why, why, why? And why, you know, if you look, if you're li uh, living in a, in a small community, a village in southwest Alaska or northwest Alaska, why, why is that big mining development over there? Why is that mining development? And they say there are native corporations, but no, none of our shareholders live in the village. Why? 
And then wh where's the money going? And the, the mining executives come and say, we have distributed a uh, hundred thousand or a million dollars to the shareholders of the village corporation. But do they live in the village? Well, that's going to be debatable. And if you, if the villages have grown, you know, from 50 to 150 to 200, and most of them have, even though today in this day and age there's kind of a, a migration into the urban areas. No other group of people in the world has ha has been forced, expected. I would probably use the word forced to become capitalists overnight. No other group in the world. And uh, what the native corporations have done, despite everything I've said, it has been a tremendous success from that point of view, that overnight transformation. But there's still a lot of work that needs to be uh, done. And I think what uh, the native corporations have to do is that they have to uh, go back to the roots and they have to start addressing some of the, uh, the social agenda issues, as the, as the uh, native associations did in the 1970s. They have to start looking at, at taking care of the old people, taking care of the young people, and making sure that, that the average Alaskan native's life has uh, increased to a better standard of living.